These are some of the greatest herds that move across some of Africa's largest wildernesses. And one day, they sense a difference in the air, and they turn back towards the rivers to the north before that slight dryness grows in intensity and catches them up, vulnerable as they are to the devils and dervishes of the dry season. And they run. They run as if they could escape their destiny. But it is Africa that pulls those strings as they set their sights on the first of the series of water holes ahead. On the fringes of this lake, an unusual pride of lions has been breeding within earshot of a large herd of hippos. Lions usually run from hippos, but at this age, they don't yet know what they can't do, so they'll try anything. They're still unsure of themselves. But tonight, they will test themselves against the magic of these fearful beasts that grunt their way through the darkness. is bold and dangerous. <laughs> They're still uncoordinated, just cubs really out playing. But when the older brothers arrive, the game changes. Right here is how it probably all started. This grand adventure, this change within them that set these lions on a course to a different destiny. Gentle the touch that wakens you from your dreams. Softly the shape that steals the light. You are new now, but the shadows will dance within you. It is their time now, but this moment of fulfillment is about to be eclipsed. Their fathers have heard the cub's first success and can sense a change that first smell of rebellion that will lead to an interest in mating. It won't be tolerated. It can't be tolerated. Pleasure. The cubs scatter into the bush, their lives shattered by this attack that suddenly rained down upon them. Confused and scared, they set off. Every lion cub goes through exactly the same traumatic process at this age. Their choice is now simple. Leave or confront the teeth and claws of their own fathers. Ah. 
Africa knows about paradise and the wounds of loss. It knows how to look back without turning back. Today, as you look at the sun and the moon, see them as the ones who know that a hungry belly is a wild thing. Strands of connectivity run through Africa, linking waterholes, elephants, and the patient waiting of lions. They appear one day following a herd of buffalo. The similarities to hippo have not gone unnoticed. Yes, I know you from inside. Different, but the same. We have agreed to meet like this before. It's their chance, one of their last. A test how well they have learned their lessons. Mother's shadows have faded and they stand naked under the moon. from both sides. It is a golden ray of light and a dark sloping shadow. It has the power to abandon pretenses and the humor to play with your body. Did no one tell you that you belong to the hungry belly? two predators have been going on for millennia.
the fractured group of lions is swamped because of their weakness as a working unit. And the hyenas have sensed something of their lack of confidence. <laughs> As they move away, shaken by the hyena attack, they step right into another conflict. One they will have to learn to deal with as they move further east across the more prominent elephant paths. Right now, the young nomadic group could break up and scatter into the wind as lost individuals. But the large lioness, who so often takes the lead, starts to greet and reassure the others. As she does so, she fixes the group together in a social bond, and they become one. At last, a pride of lions. But one day, through the haze of failure in this desolate landscape, the large lioness sees signs. The tracks of which gods are those walking inside me? Are they from the fire or the flood? Are they the ones who wait for me? And is this my map of blood? Is this my destiny? After a journey through some of the hardest country in Botswana, paradise. And this time, they don't seem to care if their arrival sends shockwaves around them. This time, perhaps, they have come too far to give up. This is a new world, filled with a wild flurry around their heads and giants that rule the land. But as they infiltrate the space around the water and calm returns, the real opportunities emerge in front of them, the real value of being masters of this waterhole.
glorious rewards of struggle and learning are short-lived. What were the chances of such a paradise being unattended? Every prime piece of wild Africa has its territorial male that has seen off many an intruder. He has fought hard for possession and struts the confidence of old victories. He seems to miss the fact that the female has the scent of a nomad on her soul. His brother may be less distracted. But he's not. These males rule together, like most across Africa, in pairs, so that their roars can confuse and their claws can slash together in their defense. But between these two, there is an uneasy alliance, and she senses it. Driven by hunger, and the flush of success, she tries to slip in unnoticed. It is a reckless move. The females have been killed for less. And it is only as the meat settles in their bellies that they notice that the nomads are not of their own pride of females. Their lionesses moved south to have cubs a few weeks before, leaving the waterhole vacant for the moment, and their males without huntresses. Darkness is no place to hide from a male lion. Their tolerance has already been stretched. It's now or never. The oldest surviving brother makes a bold initiative, flanking right. His sister, the large female, circles to help, but she is his only support. She is isolated and helpless. The masters are victorious. As they slink off, the young lions leave their oldest brother behind to his fate. He is never seen again after this night. Another casualty of Africa's indifference. The young nomads are still around watching and waiting. The males know it. The 
the old bulls look down at these stubborn cats and test their will. They aren't going anywhere. They are the owners here. And what the young nomads see is the beginning of a storm brewing in this show of defiance between these enemies, the ultimate of enemies, the largest and the fiercest, the grey and the gold. They say that behind every mirror there is a reflection of another face. It is the same with water, that ancient place where twins compete for the same thirst. They say it is a place where grey and gold meet and that it knows the shape of hunger, but it really only knows its own colour. Red. Out here, the heat sucks the moisture out of the earth. The eternal battle is for water. The body cries out for life. The mind weeps to succumb, to rest, to be still, to avoid that extra step in the heat that drags at your lungs and fogs the mind. The elephants find a small resource of minerals under the earth, as if by magic. Salts and minerals may not help their thirsts, but it will boost their energy, a last precious find that will sustain them until nightfall and relief, fickle as that African night can be. Africa comes at you from both sides, like the sun that dreams through the twilight and the moon that creeps through your soul. It has two faces, one you see and one you must find. If you find the joyful look, you have looked well. The nomads have stayed and the males have left their mark on these new females. And with the birth of their cubs, the nomads, those wanderers who crossed the wilderness and lost so much, go through yet another transition. They have become a pride of lions. Strangely, the male's courtship of the females has come with a guarded acceptance of the young males as well. For now, it's unusual, perhaps unique to this isolated waterhole. And the elephants keep streaming in from the forests. Each day the sun gets hotter and hotter, and the numbers of the waterhole swell all the time. The new cubs take it all for granted. They know nothing different. From birth they have dazzled and played in amongst the legs of giants. An echo of what their mothers grew up with in the land of the hippos. The familiarity takes seed and starts to grow. Among the elephants now, a volcanic tension builds up as they struggle and wrestle over the tiny trickle of fresh water. The fighting is inevitable. 
So many bull elephants, so little water, so much potential aggression. Africa, the puppeteer, is at work again. waiting, watching, and an acknowledgement of opportunity when change flows in from the horizon. Exhausted by a long life and a short supply of water, an elephant collapses under the force of a six-ton body blow. He gives up that drive to fight for water, for space, for life. Immediately, calm descends, the sort of calm that comes when the wind drops and the waves stop crashing. The other bulls go quiet too, like ghosts before their time silently drinking their last mouthfuls of water before the moon catches them out, before time catches them out, before the tolling of the last bell. The horrors we feel are simply the currency of the night here, as it was, as it is now, and as it ever will be.
the horrors of the last breath and when a shining light goes out when darkness descends at midday and nothing is ever the same as it was before The next change is in the last part of the dry season. Breeding herds of females and calves have made it to the next water. It is the only water for 70 miles in any direction. But this is a special water hole, and their arrival is eagerly awaited. In the past 20 years, this waterhole has seen more and more elephants arrive each season. These herds are also captive to their own thirsts. The coolness of the twilight renews their hopes and the smell of water tempts them back in. They steal in under cover of darkness. The elephants make a fatal mistake, the mistake of underestimating your enemy. Tonight, 
feel the blurred edge between grey and gold and say no to the urge to look away or to take sides but give with both eyes. Tonight the elephant world is ripped apart. Over the next few weeks, they attack herd after herd. In the dark, the mothers have only one instinct, to look after their youngest and hope that the older calves can fend for themselves. Many can't. success of successes. A few months ago, they were wandering nomads. After weeks of this persistent slaughter, the area is littered with the bones of the silent victims. Small elephants separated from their mothers in the darkness and recycled back from where they came. Their thirst drives still more elephants into the waterhole in a slow trickle of grey shapes. As they arrive, they are watched carefully. The lions look into each fresh batch of elephants as if they could see through the skin, looking deep, beyond the bones and muscle, piercing the soul for any sign of weakness. And what they smell must be an assault on their senses. The silence shouts out the horror of those nights. no healing silence that can replace your sweet fragrance. But they must drink at all costs. It's the last of it and the bitter smell of bones discarded and scattered around their feet enrages them. lions, the window of opportunity is slowly blowing closed. The distant rumble beats its music clearly. 
The elephant hunting time is nearly over. When the rains come, the balance will shift again. The herds and their enticing calves will stop arriving from the interior. And for a few desperate months, the lions will be alone. For one last time, they look at the bulls. The large lioness readies herself as one of these six-ton bulls ghosts below her. In the boldest attempt known to a lion, she attempts to wrestle him to the ground, alone. An ant against a mountain. barely notices, but her attempt is a sign of infinite possibilities for the future. Will they all start killing bulls one day? And then, like apparitions from the darkness, late stragglers loom out of them. by her herd. For the lions, it's the ultimate challenge, a last desperate chance. in the eyes as all hope drains out and fate is accepted. But the dead are not lost forever. They are the storm on the wind. They are the sudden brightness in the sky. They are the earth. They are the air. The dead are not dead. Her escape is one of the miracles of the African night, where that great dispassionate eye smiles on some from time to time. And so, for now, it is over. Once, in a small part of Botswana, magical and horrific things happened. Once, perhaps. For this behavior is maybe as ancient as the breath of a saber tooth on the hard back of a mammoth. A momentary flash of the past, ancient and buried, only ready to erupt from the sands of time when the time is right. 
and that time may well be triggered by the sheer abundance of elephants running their own race each year according to their contract with Africa. The lions are simply adding their weight to the balance. And us, will we allow them all the freedom to run, to live or die by this violent hand? Are we able to see the beauty in Africa's harsh violence and realize that there is no violation here, no malice, just a set of ancient responses. For the lions, we don't know what the next season holds. The new generation plays as if there is no tomorrow, confident in their ability to adapt. But the water may dry up, everything may change. The battle between these two ultimate of enemies may well be over. And yet, if we share their confidence in the future, we'll understand the thread between these two protagonists. The thread that connects their destinies. And this will go on forever. Yes, and when you face me again, Maybe you'll remember that your wild eye, when open, travels inward.